This is a voice on your radio you won't hear from me too often, but in accordance with the holidays, I thought I should say Happy Halloween and present our very special holiday episode. My name is Justin Morton. I am the writer and director of Radioverse, and I want to personally thank you for tuning in. Next week, you'll get a thrilling conclusion of Static and Silence. These episodes do contain some graphic content and might disturb you. Listen at your own risk. After Static and Silence, we'll be releasing smaller episodes for a few weeks before we're getting back to our normal length. We're all happy to have you tuning in, and hopefully we'll give you a good fright tonight. Right this way. Danielle led the group through a decaying wooden door. She lifted it up and heard the loud creak, only louder when Amanda lifted the door above Danielle's head. We're not all as short as you. Will you shut up? Just who are we going to wake up? Sure, just leave me with the door. Don't tell me you're whining again, Amanda. Helen grabbed the door from behind Amanda, who jumped. Mira was the last one to come through the door, carrying the majority of the equipment. Do you need help? I got it. It's not that bad. All right. Helen and Amanda exchanged a look, causing Amanda to laugh. (laughs) Hurry up! Will you shut up? Are you asking for the cops to show up? Don't be such a wimp. Why do you think we chose this location? I'm not being a... Forget it. Eric pushed past Helen. He held his phone out. The soft glow of the flashlight illuminated a hallway filled with rubble, newspaper, and broken window panes. The walls were in a state of decay, paint chips peeling off every inch of the wall that was visible with every pan of the phone's light. Wow, this is spooky. Are you sure it's safe? (gasps) I mean, asbestos or hazardous chemicals? A little late to ask. Amanda walked forward, holding her phone out, panning it around with Eric. (laughs) Ah! (laughs) What's wrong? Mira looks around confused, everyone just staring at her. Eric and Helen, breathing a little too haggardly. Try... Not to slam anything. Sorry. The equipment was caught on the door. Here, just stay still. Tyler took the equipment off Mira. The room's up ahead, right? Yeah, follow me. Thanks. Mira took out a high-powered flashlight. Uh, (laughs) Way too bright. You'll thank me later. Danielle, what's the history behind this place? The group follows Mira. Danielle pulls out her phone and starts reading off a page. Nice asylum. Mental health facility closed in the 70s due to a lack of funding and poor conditions. Been around since 1793. Big haunt spot, tortured souls, rumors about a portal to hell. speakers. The road you're traveling, the room you're sitting in, it'll start to twist and turn, becoming something beyond ordinary, something beyond this world. Join us as we travel beyond the stars deep underground, or in the innermost depths of the human mind. You just tuned into the Radioverse.
spooky. What she said. Why are we here? Tyler, you have the Ouija board, right? Mira turned a corner. They reached a large room. Yep. I also have the candles and chalk. This is going to be awesome. <sighs> Spending Halloween in a haunted asylum. This is the dream. <laughs> Weirdo. Yeah. What could go wrong? I found some chairs. Danielle ran to the edge of the room. Mira placed the flashlight face up, so the light lit the entire room spilling over every corner of the ceiling, leaving the empty hallways to dance with the ebbing and flowing light. Ugh, help me with this. Helen stood by a couch, dusty but still in one piece. I am not sitting in that. I didn't ask you to. Eric, honey, come on, make yourself useful. <sighs> I'm coming. Mira was on her hands and knees drawing circular patterns on the concrete, cracked floor, paying no mind to anyone else. For the record, this is the dumbest thing I have ever done. Eric helped pick up the couch. Helen and Eric slowly walked it over, almost dropping the couch. When Helen stepped over a clipboard and screamed, <coughs> Eric just looked at her and tugged on the couch. Helen followed. I know. Isn't it great here? I'll help with the chairs. Tonight will be a night we'll never forget. How does this game work? Easy. Using the seance ring and the Ouija board, we summon a random ghost. Or demon. <sighs> or demon. And when we summon the demon or ghost, we ask it to play a game of scavenger hunt. This is so stupid. Shut up. Ow! We'll be the first podcast to do this live. Think of the viewers. Think of the deaths. The game lasts three hours. We start at midnight, and it ends at 3 a.m. If we win? I'm going to guess no one ever won before. That's not a bad Ugh, stop sign. Stop complaining! The game's just a game. Mira starts lighting the candles, spread out across a chalk drawing of a pentagram. We separate into three teams and find things the Ouija board tells us to. If we do it right, we'll get an answer to a real-life ghost story, and an interview with a real- A ghost, we get it. Am I the only one who's freaked out right now? Me too, babe. Maybe we should get out of here. Shut up! You're supposed to be comforting me. Oh. Come here, then. Oh, oh, oh. Gag me! All set up. Tyler taps the microphone, now connected to a stand in the middle of the room. Cool. How long has the mic been on for? Since we got in. In? As in? <laughs> Our listeners can hear Eric's manly screams. You're such a jackass. Okay, that's the last piece. Mira stood up and placed the Ouija board in the middle of a chalk design. What are the teams? I'm going with Eric. <laughs> Good. I call Mira. Not me. Please, she's the only person who knows this place in and out. I'm in it to win it. Gotcha, babe. Besides, we all know how Danielle- Will you shut up? What's going on now? Nothing. Fifteen minutes left. What do we do until midnight? Easy. We drink. Amanda starts handing out beers. Mira refuses one, and so does Tyler. Everyone tries to sink in and relax but the room is fairly open and silent. The candles and the lanterns only seem to make the shadows grow and shrink, giving the impression that they aren't alone. Tell us a crazy story. Eric shrugs his shoulders. Why are we asking him? Come on, our listeners are going to get bored and find something else to listen to. We could just record in 15 minutes. No, this needs to be authentic. I want our readers to be sucked in, to the point where we might give them a real heart attack. Guys, I bet you Mira knows a good one. Please, Mira, save us. <sighs> fine, fine, all right. Make it a spooky one. Is this a good idea? Shut up. Let's talk about Jane, or patient number 302. The entire group fell silent. The only sound was the wind outside, slowly moving through the empty hallways and the soft flicker of the candles. 
Mira leaned forward, her face taking on an otherworldly glow mixed with the light. A hundred years ago, there was this woman named Jane. No one knew her real name or how she ended up there. But Jane always gazed off into the distance, never really making eye contact with any of the doctors or orderlies. But that wasn't the strangest part. You see, she always looked horrified. Jane would flinch at whatever she was looking at. Strange things started happening around her. Accidents. Sounds late at night, like something enormous was scraping against the concrete floor. Whenever anyone looked, there would be nothing. Well, almost nothing. There was always a line left in the ground. A scrape mark. One particular day, Jane was screaming. When the orderlies came in, trying to get her to calm down, nothing worked. She kept saying, Mira bent down lower, gesturing everyone to come closer. They obliged, shifting in their seats. Mira paused and whispered, He's behind you. <laughs> Excellent timing. Just doing my job. You I asked. almost had a heart attack. Oh I'm gonna need a second. I definitely did have a heart attack. To this day, you can hear the scraping and the echoes of Jane's warning. He's right behind you. That's why we're here? To find out if Jane existed and what she saw? Maybe this is a bad idea. That's what I've been saying. I'm pretty freaked out. Too late. Mira's phone alarm went off. Everyone was silent, staring at the repeated beeps before Mira turned it off and sat on the concrete floor above the Ouija board. It's time to start. Get on the floor with me, Amanda. How naughty. Stop playing around. You have to move the platina with me. And Jane. Myra, are you sure we should be doing this? Let her continue. We are about to make history. Is anyone here with us right now? There was no sound after Mira asked. Just the flicker of the candles until there was a light scraping on the Ouija board. And Eric gasping. <gasps> the piece moved to yes. Ah! No. No, you did it wrong! Wh what is she talking about? Everyone in the room eyed the Ouija board with a very specific and frightened look. I don't understand why everyone is freaking out. She lit the six white candles and the six black. See? She even organized them. When you're done, you say goodbye. Place the patina on the middle of the board. Or else you invited whatever you've been talking to to either follow you or worse. Forever! What else are we missing? Yes. If the white candles stay lit, steadily moving around, then everything's alright. If the black candles dance wildly, then there's trouble. I'm lost. What did you do wrong? I forgot to ask permission to speak to the spirits. But they answered you anyway. What does it mean? The platina moved again to the yes at the edge of the board. Guys! The candles are fine. There's no need to scream. <laughs> Maybe we should. The platina scratched over the letters slowly. The lights from the candles seemed to elongate and stretch over every single shadow. J A N E E Jane. Oh my god! This is too much. We have made contact with Jane, just like we'd hoped. Wait a minute. May I ask, are you really Jane, or are you just assuming her name? Yes. May I ask you to prove it? How? Uh, tell her about the game. Wait a second. Should we ask her questions about herself? Maybe it's a different Jane. That's a good point. Jane, may I ask what you saw that no one else saw? Jesus freaking Christ! Calm down! The candles danced. A loud bang from deeper within the asylum caused everyone to jump and scream. Ah! Don't curse at the board! I, I didn't! I said it in general! Keep it to yourself! 
please tell me you know what you're doing. A. N. T. T. O. Okay. That's just freaky. What's freaky? You don't want to know. I do want to know. Tell me. No. That's what the board spelled. You don't want to know. Jane, can we play a game? I don't think... In for a penny, in for a pound. Yes. Fine. The game is called Scavenger Hunt. We ask Jane a few questions to get an idea of what happened to her in life and then death. If we can find those objects after getting clues from her in the designated time frame... Jane will have to answer any question and help us prove ghosts are real. Say a few words to the radio or get some photos and so on. If we lose... If we lose, we'll belong to the asylum forever. Oh, hell no. It's just a formality. Don't be babies. Or just say yes. If they leave, we forfeit. Guys, come back. What the... Eric went to move the board. They had to lift to get in. But no matter how hard he pushed or tried... The board wouldn't move. It feels like solid concrete. Push harder! What do you think I'm doing? What the actual hell? The only way out is to win the game. Are you out of your mind? You might have just killed us! Honey. No. This was stupid from the start, and now here we are, trapped in this hellhole. Oh, and if we don't win, we might as well get comfortable. This is low. I didn't sign up for this! What? Calm down. Mira has something to say. We have to find five objects and piece together what happened to Jane. We get ten questions to gather clues. Come here. I need everyone's full attention. Helen, Eric, and Amanda sat down. Danielle looked up, holding a notepad. All ready to take notes. Tyler tried to console Eric and Helen. It's just a game. Everything will be fine. First question. Who wants to go? We all have to? Be polite. Yes, we all have to ask. I'll ask the first question. <clears throat> Jane, can you please tell us where you died? Small room. Scratches. I'll go next. Can you tell us how you died? Can't breathe. Who was in charge of this place? Oh, I'm sorry. Can you please tell us who's in charge of this place? Adam. As the platina scratched its way across the board, a breeze swept across the room, flickering the candles, but not extinguishing them. That was close. Can you help us find out why you were brought here? No. Were you killed? I mean... Could you tell us if the thing you saw killed you? Not me, others. I wish I didn't ask her. Yeah, me too. Stop looking at me! God damn it! Fine! Fine. Can we leave? The lights flickered angrily, dimming the room for a moment. There was another loud bang. (laughs) Ah! You asshole! I'm sorry! Not until you finish the game. Guys, we have four more questions. Save them. We might need them to verify the answer. We need to split up into three teams. Two to search, and one to save with Jane. What? Rule six. Never be alone with the board. And remember, we don't leave without saying goodbye. We can alternate or just leave a team permanently here. I'm with Danielle, right? That's right. I'm with Amanda. We need to find these things. Here, everyone take one each. Thanks. Who's staying? I'm not going anywhere. I don't want to be alone with... (laughs) At least we'll have the candlelight. Do you really want to be out there? In the dark? Yes, I'm fine. Right here. This is very important. Don't ask Jane any questions or anything out loud. If the board moves, take note of what happens, but don't interfere. And if the candles act up, just let us know which ones and how. Just shout. Just so you guys know... I hate all of you. Linking now. (laughs) Now I'm really lost. What are you two doing? 
linking up with the microphone will all simultaneously record. So, try and keep quiet unless you found something spooky. Can't confuse our listeners. No gossiping, then. Just remember, we'll hear everything you say. That's no fun. Is everyone ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Same. Born ready. Good. Good for you guys. No sleeping. I couldn't sleep if I wanted to. <laughs> but what if I have to pee? In the bottle or against the wall. Anything else, I'd hold it. Lovely. <laughs> One advantage. Sorry, ladies. Laugh it up. Go find the stuff so we can leave this creepy place. I'll take the West Wing with Mira. It should have the director's office, the crematorium, some of the nurses' offices, and the cafeteria. What's in the East Wing? I have the map on my phone. Should be a courtyard, showers, bedrooms, and also the basement. Meet back here at 2.15. If anything goes wrong, just shout. Reception is spotty, so I want us to focus on the recording. If you have to call, only as a last resort. <laughs> Everyone ready to make history? Woo! Ugh, you guys are so lame. Helen laid in Eric's lap, already on her phone. Please don't get eaten. They turned and went in separate directions. Fading into the darkness, Eric closed his eyes for a moment and opened them up, trying not to look at the swirling darkness or the flickering lights. Ugh, never again. I told you we should focus on fashion. Try to get interviews. I said sports. They never listen to us. I listen to you. Aw, fave. You know, no one asked Jane if she was alone. I hope she's alone. Quit talking about that stuff. Let's get back to what's really important. <laughs> they didn't notice the platina slide across the Ouija board, landing on no. The footsteps echoed, heading off into different directions to find out how Jane died. And maybe who she was. Jane, there's so much to understand. I mean, what happened? Who was she? How did she die? Why did this place shut down? The mysterious deaths, it's all so confusing. You're doing it again. Listen, do your thing. I'm just in for the experience and exposition. The halls became narrower. Every single footstep seemed to echo. The soft footfalls didn't seem to affect Mira or Amanda. Mira stopped suddenly, holding up her phone, looking at the screen and pinching it. Stop. We should be by the offices. Amanda held the flashlight out the beam pointing towards a hallway that ended. Paint chips and newspaper scattered across the ground. The rooms started to split off into single rooms lined up down a corridor. Desks, some broken, others overturned, and one desk with a concrete slab crunched right through it. Filing cabinets in the corner, some standing upright, others leaning against a wall, even some open with nothing inside. Amanda started going through the desks and filing cabinets, finding nothing, just some old newspapers. Damn, they've been cleaned out. Looks like we won't find anything here. Let's keep moving. Hey, wait, wasn't there a concrete block here? What are you talking about? There was a sledgehammer here, in the desk. Starting to channel Eric. I didn't see anything. <laughs> Maybe he's rubbing off on me. How far to the director's office? Crematorium's closer. How about the cafeteria? Don't tell me you're hungry. Real funny. I really thought I saw something. Are you coming? Watch out! Tyler ran forward. Danielle tripped over a falling column she didn't see. Danielle found herself in Tyler's arms, looking up at him, not really knowing how to react or even how to form words. I... I... I'm fine. Thanks, bro. So stupid. You say something? No. Just crazy how I didn't see that column. <laughs> Be careful. I can't have you getting hurt on me now. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't do... Oh, 
We're here. The courtyard? Tyler turned and followed the light from Danielle's phone. There was an archway, partially collapsed on itself, leading outside. Now raining lightly, a flash of lightning revealed a silhouette in the middle of the courtyard. Tyler jumped as thunder boomed, drowning him out. Did you see something? No. I just thought I saw something. Wait, do you see that? There's something out there. Tyler tried to stop Danielle, but he was too slow. She walked outside, and he jogged after her to catch up. The courtyard slowly was revealed with every pan of the flashlight. Overgrown weeds and a large hanging dead tree. The branches scratching against the concrete walls. Dead center in the courtyard, after another flash of lightning, they saw a tombstone. That's not usually a good sign. Should we check it out? I... I think we have to. Why don't you stay back at the end? Don't go pulling that white knight shit on me. I'm fine. We can do this together. They stood at the base of the tombstone, a slab standing up in the middle of the mud and weeds. Danielle grabs Tyler's arm, holding her other hand up, trying to block the wind. The flashlight illuminates the tombstone. There's no name. Just some scratched out lines, long eroded. Do we dig? I don't think there's anything else we could do. Here, grab the shovel in my pack. You brought a shovel? It's more of a troll. Hey, don't look at me like that. Myra said scavenger hunt. I figured, why not bring what I could find laying around? You're a strange dude. <laughs> I'm feeling a little less freaked out. Let's go dig this grave up. Yes, ma'am. Tyler almost instantly became caked in mud as he started digging through the soft mud. After a few minutes of Danielle holding the flashlight so Tyler didn't start putting holes in the lawn for fun, the troll clinked against something. A coffin. Ah! I thought you were feeling better. Sorry, I just didn't expect... A coffin below a grave? <laughs> Here, stand back. I think I can pull this up. Remember what Jane said? I can't breathe. You don't think she was... Ugh, I can't believe this. What's taking them so long? It's been longer than an hour. I know. My phone's starting to die. I keep hearing scratching. Helen... Maybe we should... Maybe what? Find a way out of here. You heard what they said. But what about... You know the thing. The monster that supposedly killed everyone? What if it's here too? Why don't we just ask Jane then? No! They might need those questions. Why don't we just look at the map? God, I can't believe you! Would you rather we stay here? What if they don't come back? Where the hell are they going to go? Do you know how paranoid you sound right now? And you're a big help? Maybe I should have went with Tyler. At least then I would feel safe. What did you say? You heard me. Crying and whining. Why don't you quit bitching and just do something? Can I just get a real man for a minute? You... Fine. I I'll do something. Honey? I'm sorry. Come back here! The room was silent for a moment, before the flames started to burn out of control. A voice started to speak. Crematorium. Not quite what I was expecting. Amanda walked to the edge of the room, inspecting a steel coffin, now eroding. Connected to a hole in the wall that looks like it was once a chute, Amanda opened the lid. It must be linked to the furnaces. I don't see any scratches here. Maybe this is the I can't breathe clue. <sighs> I don't think our girl was cremated. What's that? Oh my god! Oh, warn me next time! It's just a skeleton. Amanda put her hand on the skull and started moving the jaw. Hey, you wouldn't have happened to see anything around here. Spooky ghosts or monsters. No, before you woke me up, I was having the best dream. Stop it. Oh yeah? What were you dreaming about? I was playing fetch with a dog. Too bad he gave me back my arm all chewed up. 
Amanda. Hey, baby, why don't you come here and give me a kiss? I swear to God. Hey, would you look at that? A note. Have you no shame? Honey, I don't even know what that word means. It's a picture. Let me see. That's freaky. Look, it must be the entire staff and patients. I think that's Jane. How do you know it's Jane? Well, she's not looking at the camera. She's looking off to the side. The woman, bottom right. That would follow with the stories, but... How do you know it's not? Call it a hunch? I guess that's a good point. Hey, there's a patient folder. Mary. So, it isn't our girl. I'll take this just in case. Sure. Now, can we check the cafeteria? Why are you so obsessed about the damn cafeteria? I might be hungry. You must be pretty desperate if you'll think you'll find food. It happened in The Shining. That was booze. There's nothing inside. Ty, no, wait. There's something here. A necklace. Danielle reached into the coffin. The lights from her phone glinted off something gold. A rosary. Danielle picked it up in her hand, watching it fall from her fingers. The gold glint almost hypnotizing the way it reflected in the light. Christ, I mean literally. Look at what you found. You think it means something? Guess that's one clue. Let's try the showers next. Have an idea? Yeah, let's get the mud off of our clothes. You think this place has running water? They leave the courtyard and slowly walk through the hallway corridor again. The crunching of the glass and debris sends chills up both of their spines. Just think about somewhere nice and warm. Hold my hand. It might help. See? I promise I won't let anything happen to you. Listen, there's something that I wanted to say for a while. Shh, wait. I don't think we're alone. Tyler slowly and quietly led Danielle to one of the showers. There was an opaque curtain. He pulled to cover them. Danielle buried herself in Tyler's chest as he leaned against the back of the shower his arms around Danielle protectively. They turned off the lights and laid back in complete darkness. Each sound mirrored in their heartbeats. I'm scared. Just close your eyes. It'll be okay. Where the hell is everyone? Eric, is that you? Oh! Oh! You scared the shit out of me. Why aren't you back with the Ouija board? Helen was a major bitch, that's why. Oh, for Christ's sake! You can't leave someone alone! Please. You're talking Helen? She's scarier than any demon or monster. Go by yourself. We're finishing the game. Ah, forget you guys. Should we get him? Where's he gonna go? Do you think we should tell Amanda and Mira? Hold on. My phone says it's already 1.30. We don't have much time left. We should just keep looking. Do you see anything in the showers? A health code violation. Yeah, me too. This isn't funny! Eric! Who's there? I swear to God, I will murder whoever is doing this. close by. I think it came from the hallway. Wait, look at this. It's an envelope. What's in it? She really can scream. Files on Jane. Oh my god! (sighs) We'd better get back. A Bible with a leaflet in it. Pretty hard to miss this room. It has her name scratched inside it. When she said a room full of scratches, I didn't think she meant it like this. Yeah, it's a little freaky. Look how every single letter is dug in with a... like a knife. (coughs) 
That can't be good. We better hurry back. I'm right behind you. They stopped running in the middle of a hallway. Eric was crouched down over something, screaming his head off. Amanda and Mira look like the blood has been drained from their faces. What is it? Oh God. <laughs> Helen's body was laid out against the ground. Where her head was, the concrete was pulverized, leaving a red and black imprint, barely recognizable. What? Oh my God, Helen! Helen! Don't look. Who's watching Jane? Static and Silence, Part 1, was written and directed by Justin Morton, edited by Sasha Bloor, music by Louis Contreras, theme by Ryan Smolik, and Lucas Dorsey. Tyler was played by Harry Scales. Danielle was played by Megan Taylor. Mira and Jane were played by Sasha Bloor. Eric was played by Morty WK. Amanda was played by S.H. Cooper. Helen was played by E.V.H. The Stalker was played by E.S. Henry. Narrated by yours truly, Matt Raftis.